Okay, this is going to be the Algebra 1 sample test for factoring Unit 7. Um, one of the big things that you're going to have to be able to do in this unit is get to the GCD button. Okay? Now, the way you get to that is you go to Option, okay? then you go F6 for a like, little arrow deal, okay? and then you're going to go Num, which is F4. Then you're going to do that F6 key again for the arrow, and you're going to select GCD, which is F2. Now, when you type in the GCD, the way you should do that is GCD, like for example in this, I would type 1, comma, negative 8, comma, negative 20, okay? And that's how you would type in those things, okay? All right, my calculator doesn't have a GCD button, so as I go through this, I'll be referencing that. So it would just be option. Then the idea is you scroll, then you hit num. Now my calculator doesn't have it, but there should be a scroll over here, okay? And then you, you proceed with that, okay? So I'm, I'm going to be mentioning that as we go, okay? So factor, uh, we're going to factor this. So I would do the GCD here, and what that would come up with is just one. There's not an X in common, so there's no GCF. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the first and last term, which is negative 20, okay? Factors of 20 are 1 and 20. 2 and 10, all right, 4 and 5. And the way I got those, uh, pretty simply, is you can just do 20 divided by 1. Result would be 20. 20 divided by 2, the result is 10. And 20 divided by 4, the result is 5. And there's no more to pick. Now, the issue here with this, when I have negative 20, is I'm going to start by making one side negative. And the reason for that is this times this has got to give me that. Now, what I'm looking for is the set that adds up to negative 8. Now, if you see this, this would be uh, 19, this would be positive 8, and this would be 1. Now, I need it to be negative, so I got the negative on the wrong side. So I'm going to keep these positive and make those negative. So if I add that up now, that's negative 8. Okay? So then what I want to do is I'm going to use my box. Okay, first term goes in here, x squared. Uh, the positive 2x goes here. The negative 10x goes here. Negative 20 goes on the end, okay? If I did GCD with this, then it would be 1. And there, since they have a variable in common, it would be x. Now, you can use the GCD button for all the numbers going this way, okay? The other thing you can do is this times this has got to give you this, which would be 1x to the first. This times this has got to give you this, which is negative 10. Now, I also know there's no x here because if I go this way with the GCF, okay, this has an x and this doesn't, so that's why that's negative 10. Okay, this times this has got to be 2, same logic, is that this does not have an x, so that's got to be just 2. So my factors here are 1x plus 2 and 1x minus 10. Okay, now, I circle all the ones that, that apply to that. Okay, so this obviously is not 1. Nope, that's not 1. This is 1. Nope, nope. Okay, so that would just be the answer for that. Okay, because all they wanted was one factor. All right. I would do, once again, I would start with GCF. Uh, there will not be a GCF there, so I'm going to multiply 3 and 18, uh, 6, which would be negative 18. Factors of 18 are 1 and 18, 2 and 9, 3 and 6. Once again, because that's negative, I'm going to start by making one side negative. Okay, that adds up to 17, that adds up to 7, that adds up to 3. That gets me my middle term right here. Okay, so I'm going to make my box. Okay, 3n squared, okay, minus 2n positive 9n, and uh, minus 6, okay? If I did GCD for this, this would be 3. Since both of those have n's, that would be an n. If I apply the GCD button again, that would be a 1. Both those have an n, that's an n. If I do the GCD button for this one, that would be a 3. And since this does not, uh, they both don't have n's, that would be that, okay? This one, if I did the GCD button, it would tell me 2. Now, if you use GCD, that... It, since it touches that, it's got to be a negative. The other concept is that times that's got to give you that. So you've got to either use the GCD button. The only thing you've got to be careful of is if it touches a negative box, that factor, that's got to be a negative. So I've got 3n minus 2 and 1n plus 3. Let's see what 3n, plus, 3N minus 2, 1n plus 3 would be that selection right there. Okay. I would use the GCD button exclusively here, okay? And what that's going to tell you is that GCD is going to be 3, okay? 
it will be 3. Now what I want to do is I want to pick out the smallest x exponents. If they have, so that's x8, x6, x10. So I would take, it would be x6 would be, would, would be that, uh, that answer. Let's see if they have a y. y7, y5, y3. So y3 would be that one. Now z, if you notice they only have, um, not all the terms have a z. So this would be your uh, GCF. Now if you're being a good test taker, that's got to be my answer right here. Because that's the only one with the appropriate GCF. Now what you have to do with this, pretty simply, is just divide these all uh, by, well actually you can do it right here, 3, uh, 6, y3, 3, 6, y3, 3, 6, 3x6, 3, y3. Okay, so 27 divided out be 7, subtract those would be 2. Uh, 7 minus 3 would be 4 for the y's, the z4 would just drop down. Okay, plus 15 divided by 5 would be 3. 6 minus 6 would be 0, so that x should not be there. 5 minus 3 would be 2, and then z2, okay? And then negative 18 divided by 6 would be negative 6. 10 uh, minus 6 would be 4. And then the y's would not cancel, so that's another reason why that would be my answer, okay? Let's go on to this one. Uh, let's do it so you can actually see it. Okay, let's make sure you guys can see that okay. Uh, so, so, right? Okay. All right, let's move this over slightly. All right, right like that. That might help a little bit more. Okay, so what I would want to do is I would want to do the GCD to start, okay? And what I would figure out is that would be a two, okay? All right, <clears throat> and so what I want to do, I'm sorry, not a two, it would be a three. So what I want to do is I want to divide all of those by three, okay? And so what that ends up being is it ends up being 2x squared minus 1x minus 3, okay? All right, <clears throat> so I want to multiply this times this, which would be negative 6, okay? Factors of, of 6 are 1 and 6, 2 and 3. And if I put the, since that's negative, I'm going to put that right like that. Now, if I do that, that's going to be 5, and that's going to be 1. Now, I want negative 1, so pretty simply, if I switch those, now it would be negative one. So that would be my set there, okay? I'm gonna use my box, okay? I got two x squared would be in here. Uh, positive two x would be here. Negative three x would be here. And then negative three would be right there, okay? So GCD wise, there'd be a one. Since both of those have an x, the smallest exponent is x. Well, one times this would have to be a two with an x because they both have one. One times this has to be negative three. That does not have an x because they both don't have one. This time, this has got to be 1, okay? And it also doesn't have an x because it, it doesn't have one. So what I got is 1x plus 1, 2x minus 3. Now, I can't forget that I took out a 3 there, okay? So what they want you to do is circle each expression. So 1x, 1 would get circled, 3 would get circled, and uh, 2x minus 3 would get circled. So all those, those three things would all have to be circled. Okay, <clears throat> moving on to these. All right, uh, if I did GCF uh, for this, or GCD, this would be a one, and they only this does not have an M, so I can just go ahead and do uh, seven times two, which is 14. Uh, one and 14, two and seven, that's the only factors there. Uh, very simply, I'm looking for the factors that add up to nine, which would be right there. Okay, so I got seven M squared plus two M plus seven M uh, plus two, okay? Now, if I do the, the GCD for that, that's going to be 1, and they both have an M. If I did the GCD or multiplied, that would be uh, 7. Since they have an M, I would pick the smallest one. Uh, same thing here. This would have to be 2, uh, no M there, and this would have to be 1, because that's the way that would be. So that's 1M plus 1, 7M plus 2, okay? So M plus 1, 7M plus 2, okay? Uh, I, I, an easy thing you could do for this, if you really don't want to get confused, is to just circle all the factors. Check to see if they're all there, okay? Now, um, if I do GCF for this one, it would end up being one and that doesn't have an R. So I would multiply that, which would give me 24. Factors of 24 are one and 24, uh, two and 12, uh, three and eight, and then four and six. Now, if you go to add these, okay? All right, 
the, the, the thing that's going to happen is if you notice, all these are positive numbers. And I got to get this to be this, that case. Now, if somebody said, well, Mr. Evan, just make one side negative. Well, the problem with that is this times this doesn't equal this. So what I have to do here is make both sides negative. Okay? And if I add that up, this set right here would give me negative 11. So you've got to be careful between, the, between those um, different uh, answers there. Okay? So my box is 6R squared. Um, I'm going to do minus 3R minus 8R, and then there'll be a plus 4 at the end, okay? Uh, the GCF out of this row would be 2, and this has an R because they both have it, okay? Uh, the multiplication there would give me 3R, that has both uh, has it, do GCD as well. Uh, this one would have to be negative 4. If you do GCD, remember, this is touching a negative, so it has to be negative. Then this would be negative 1. Once again, this is touching a negative. So I got 2R minus 1, 3R minus 4, so 2R minus 1, 3R minus 4. Okay. All right. Uh, factorization. If I do the GCD, that's a one. So if I do that, it's going to be one. This does not have a B. So I do one times that, which is negative twenty-seven. One and twenty-seven, three and nine are the only factors. Now, since that's negative, I can immediately do that. Problem is, if I add, both of those results are positive. So I have to switch this. Okay. So now, now that's negative six. Now that is my answer. Okay. So when I make my box, that's uh, b squared uh, plus 3b minus 9b minus 27. All right, so if I do GCD here, that's a 1 and a negative 9, which is going to be 1, and there's a b there. Okay, so that times that would be 1b. Okay, all right, this, this times this would be negative 9. This times this would be 3. You could also do GC, uh, GCD for that. Okay, if you notice, those, those, only one of those have a b, so that, that's why it doesn't have it. Only one there, so I got uh, 1b plus 3, 1b minus 9, okay? If I look at this one, all right, <clears throat> what I would see is that my GCD would be 3, and then I would get a common variable of x squared because that's the, the smallest one. Now, when I go to divide it, I want to show you what happens, okay? 3 divided by 3 would be 1, subtract that would be x to the first, all right? Negative 15 divided by 3 would be negative 5, that would be 0, so I leave that. Now. I am done here because this is an x to the first. If it's an x squared, I can try to keep factoring. But since, I, since it's an x to the first, I am finished there. Okay? All right. <clears throat> Factors. If I do GCD with this, you'll find out it's 1. This does not have an x. So I would multiply that, which would give me 20. Okay? 1 and 20, 2 and 10, 4 and 5. Okay? Now, I'm looking for the set that adds up to negative 21, as I clearly see these are all positives. I have to make both of these negative because of two reasons. These got to multiply to get to that, and then when I add, now that's going to give me negative 21. Okay? So you need to be careful with that. All right? All right, so that's going to be 5x squared, um, minus 1x here, minus 20x here, plus 4 here. If I do the GCD here, that would be 5. They both have an X, so that's X to the first. All right, if I did GCD here, that would be 1. They both have an X, so that's X to the first. If I do GCD here, that's going to end up being 4. Now, since that touches a negative, that's got to be minus. Other rationale, 5X times this has got to be that. Same thing here. If I do GCD, it would say 1. It's touching a negative. And all the reason why is 1 times negative 1 is that. So my factors are 5X to the first minus 1. 1x to the first minus 4, okay? Now, if I do GCD with this, I don't get anything. Now, what you can do, this is a little shortcut here. If you see a minus with these two terms, you've done the, and you just have the squared and the standalone number, what's going to happen is your factors are going to have a, a pattern of plus and minus, where I can take the square root of 9, which will be 3, and the square root of 25, which is 5. So that's going to be 3a plus 5 and 3a minus 5. There was no GCD there, or I would have to factor that in as well. But you can do that with, with, those, um, with, uh, with those problems there. Okay? Factor the following polynomial. This is another pattern thing. You could do the 1 times 49 and break it down from there. The other thing you could always do, okay, and this is a little trick that you can try is that I can try to square root both of those parts. 
Now, that last example, as I showed you, it had a plus and a minus. Well, if these are positive, they'll both be plus. Square root of 1 would be 1x, 1x. Square root of 49 would be 7 and 7. Now, what you have to make sure is that these would add up to the middle term, which it does. Okay? If you did the, if you did the uh, box multiplication and did the uh, 49, the factors of 49 are 1 and 49, 7 and 7. Okay? And that would add up to 14. Okay? All right? And so you could still do all the box stuff if you wanted to. X squared and 49. Okay? 7x and 7x. So this would be x, x, or 1x, 1x. Uh, this would be 7, and that would be uh, 7. It would be the same, same concept, would lead to the same answer. That's a little bit of a shortcut. Okay? Now, move this over so we can see. All right, great. So if they give you all four, this actually becomes pretty easy. Okay? X, Y. This becomes your second term. This becomes your third term. So they, this has become second or third. All right, so like bottom left. So the second term will go here. The third term, if they give you all of them, that's what you do. If I do the GCD number-wise, it would be 1, but they both have an X. Okay? Same thing here. If I did GCD, that would be a 1. Now they both have a Y. Okay, this would be a negative 2. All right, because it's touching that, and I did the GCD, that would be 4. You could do that through multiplication. So that's 1x plus 4, 1y minus 2. Okay? And the same thing for this one. Okay, if they give you all four terms, don't need to outthink that. Okay? If I do the GCD here, that would be a, a 3, and then they have an x, so that would be 3x. If I actually did that one here, it would be 3x squared, because the smallest exponent now is x squared. This would just be a 1. This times this would have to be a negative 4. Okay, that doesn't have an x squared. So I got 3x minus 4, 3x squared plus 1. Okay? All right? These next ones, what would be the GCD? If I typed that in, um, I believe if you type in GCD 56, comma 40, uh, that would be 8. Okay? And then the smallest of those exponents would be a3, so that would be the greatest common factor. This one would be, if you did GCD, okay, uh, 60 comma 45, okay, what ends up happening there is it would tell you 15, all right? The smallest x exponent is actually x3. The smallest y, they don't have one, so that would be your, um, your biggest, okay? All right, <clears throat> simplifying. Okay, all this would be, this is like when they give you a little, this is the only part I think it's so tricky in this whole unit. If they give you one term, okay, this is very easy. You can just do apply our exponent rules to that one term, okay? Where 27 divided by 3 would be 9. If I subtract that, that would be 1. Negative 12 divided by 3 would be negative 4. Subtract that would be 0. Okay? That's easy, okay? Now, if they give you a binomial, a two-term deal, okay, what you can do, okay, I can fill in x squared minus 48. They're actually like giving you a factor here, okay? So, the way this would work pretty simply is this. This times this would have to give me x. This times this would give me 8x, okay? All right? Now, if you wanted to, there's a lot of different ways you could do this. The bottom line is these two numbers have to add up to 2. Now, what you could just do if you wanted to is if you factored uh, 48, okay? You would have 1 and 48, 2 and 24, okay? 3 and 16, 4 and 12, uh, 6 and 8, okay? Now, since the 48 is negative, that means one side would be negative, okay? Now, since they're giving you that one of the factors is x plus 8, it's sort of easy, okay? You've got to find that one. Well, that's this one. Well, that would be minus 6. And if you see that right there, those two would combine to be that. What I would do there is just factor this like you normally would. And what this is sort of almost is like a cheat sheet is that that, that can be, that's already one of your factors, and you can just figure out the rest, okay? Draw the area model to represent um, x plus 5 times x plus 2. Well, the, the big thing for that, and I would say this, 
is this big box is going to be represented by x times x. Okay? All right? If we do just our normal little box model, okay, that'd be x squared plus 5x plus 2x plus 10. Okay? So the idea with the area model is that my polynomial will be this, okay? which means that I want to have one of these big x squared boxes. Um, I want to have seven rectangles. Okay? So, all right, so the idea is this is one rectangle, two rectangles. Okay? All right, that's where the x, this is really x plus two. Okay? Then I would do five rectangles. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? So that's like, oops, that's like x plus five. Now, what ends up happening here, if I make these little, little dashes, if you count up these little boxes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's ten little boxes, and that's where that comes from. So basically what you should do to make this simple, <clears throat> draw your big box for x squared. If it's x plus 2, you draw two rectangles. Boom, boom. That will connect underneath here. Okay, to this side, draw five rectangles. That's for that one. One, two, three, four, five for x plus 5. Okay, you can draw out your little da dotted lines. That will give you the rest for the area model. Okay, I think that that's it. Okay, uh, let me do one more area model problem. Like if you had x, let's say x plus um, uh, 6 and x plus 1. The area model can be a little bit tricky. If I multiply that, okay, uh, so what I would do is x times x, I'm going to get my big box, okay? All right, that's going to give me my x squared. x plus 6 would mean I would draw six rectangles this way. One, two, three, four, five, and six, okay? All right, so that's x plus 6. x plus 1 would mean I would draw one rectangle that way, all right? So if I just continue these little dashed lines out, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? So those make up my little number boxes. Okay? So this is like 1x, 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 and 1x. And if you multiply that out like we would the old-fashioned way with the box, that would be x squared plus 6x, plus 1x, 1 times 6 would be 6. So if you count up what you have, you got 1.